Hi, I know we've been doing speakers quite a lot lately, but I like speakers and thank you very much to Simon Ashton for sending in these little British monitors. They're actually a Kickstarter uh, kit that's finishing in like a couple of days. So by the time I edit and upload this video, there could only be one or two days left. So get into it if you're interested in kit speakers. Not many people doing kit speakers these days. It used to be, you know, quite a thing back in the 70s and 80s. All the electronics magazines had a uh, kit speaker, you know, systems in them and stuff like this. But these are the little, the tiny little things. They're called the little British monitors. And yes, they are tiny and they come on these cool little springy stands they start from 300 pounds which sounds like a lot but they look pretty high quality so I thought let's check them out hmm the little British monitor cool not made in China or anything like that actually uh, designed and engineered and manufactured in Simon's own workshop so in the old dart of course hence the name little British monitor let's check them out by the way, if you're interested in the t-shirts, I've got my Teespring store. I've always had it, but it's kind of like back up and running and I'm still having a few issues with it, but it's linked in to my uh, YouTube account now. So below this video, you might actually see like an integrated ad thing, not in the usual ad location, but below it, uh, just above the comments, you should see uh, that for links to the merch store. So check it out. So check these out, aren't they cute? Tiny little things. How tiny? Well, let me show you. Or well, check them out compared to my six inch uh, Rokit 6s here and my uh, Focal CMS 40 Near Field Studio monitors here. These are the ones that we'll actually uh, compare it with really, even though they're not in the same price category uh, by any stretch. But there are similarities uh, with the Focals in terms of uh, using an inverted dome tweeter. So let's check that out. So both of them use an inverted dome tweeter there. I'm, you know, I'm not going to say that these little British monitors are uh, going to be in the same class as the uh, very well-regarded focal inverted dome tweeters. But, you know, still, I don't know where uh, Simon actually get these from, gets these from, sourced from. Um, you know, I presume they're from some sort of some Chinese manufacturer. But, you know, he would have uh, carefully selected the... Uh, Simon's actually worked for years on the uh, design of these things, and this is actually his second uh, Kickstarter. It all has already met its uh, goals, but he's also done one previously. This is like a Mark II version of the Little British Monitor. Isn't it cute? And as you can see, it actually uses uh, plywood, but it uses birch plywood. And uh, Simon claims that, well, there's research out there that says that uh, birch wood sounds better in speakers. Well, you know, okay. We've got a three inch woofer here. Um, seems to have a decently long throw on it. Uh, I'm not sure what the actual material is uh, made of. Would have liked to have seen like just some color um, hex screws on there. That would have been nice. Splash like a red or something, make it go faster. Anyway, um, here's our uh, transmission line port. Now Simon claims that uh, these are one of, uh, well, I think the only low cost speakers on the market with what's called a transmission line uh, port in quote marks. And these, are, it's supposed to be superior to a standard ported uh, enclosure, but I'm not sure how much you know, truth there is in that. But anyway, um, yeah, Simon's um, very proud of the fact that he got a transmission line port into such a small monitor. Usually you can only do it on the uh, larger ones. And we've got some little fake levery thing on the front. Yeah, not a fan of the, uh, just the, the foam in there. Looks a bit how you're doing. There's just a close up of the inverted dome tweeter for you. Tweeter aficionados, knock yourself out. The phase plug is glued on. Now I'm a bit symmetry triggered by these speakers because the phase plugs are pointing in the same direction on, by the same angle on both of them. I would have liked to have seen that one angled like symmetry. I, oh. And the back here, we actually, these aren't aluminium, these are actually uh, stainless steel backs on them. I would have preferred to actually uh, see them with their individual amplifiers. Not a huge fan of having like the uh, speaker cable going over. They use a, a four-way uh, DIN connector here, supplied with the uh, the interconnecting speaker cable, of course, but all the amplifier, all amplification happens in one. Once again, it's just a... I don't it's just a symmetry thing and potentially you've got extra loss along the uh, lines and the internal acoustic space might be different, but we'll 
have a look inside. Anyway, um, nice big ass heatsink on the back. We've got volume control on the back here. We've got on off switch on the back. Would have liked to have, like I love the on off switch on the front on my uh, focals. Absolutely fantastic. But anyway, uh, we've got an aux in. These aren't really designed for the professional monitoring market i mean there's no balanced input um unfortunately they are yes grown a bluetooth speaker but you can actually physically disable the bluetooth i wonder if that like turns off the power to the bluetooth that'd be nice i just wanted to you know <laughs> completely bypass that but it would have been nice to actually get a you know a, a balanced input and for the dc input uses like a little like a three pin limo type connector here so it you know that's pretty high quality but I, yeah i don't know if it's the best choice but anyway it is what it is now although these are called the little british monitors there's no mention that these are specifically near field what's called near field monitor speakers i.e you're listening very close to them on a desk with editing but obviously that's what these things are um simon actually publishes a, a response graph of these things and it looks uh, reasonably f flat so that was a goal for these things was to provide a flat monitor like response now these stands that uh, come optional with it they don't come ordinarily provided for the lowest cost kit are what's called a constrained layer dampening system and you might be able to see inside there there's actually a little acrylic film layer wedged in the top and bottom of that got some neoprene rubber down the other end and it, it really is quite nice for vibration isolation of your speakers the only issue with that if i rock my table these speakers are gonna rock rock and roll Whoa. i can roll but anyway, I do like them. They're pretty jazzy. So yeah, well worth getting the stands if you're going to get these things, definitely. Okay, so let's open them up, see what the ceiling's like on the back. Oh, there's a little bit of ceiling. Oh yeah, it's around the bottom, so it looks like we've got... By the way, yeah, these are fully assembled, but as I said, they do come in a kit. So you can assemble yourself, although you don't solder, all the boards come uh, pre-assembled and everything else, but all the, like the, these, but the boxes come as a flat pack and you've got to glue them together and that'd be really satisfying. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I'm actually glad he sent them in as, as made up, but sort of half of me wants, yeah, I want to be able to assemble. I love assembling like, you know, flat pack stuff with wood glue and all that sort of stuff. Real satisfying job. Anyway, it's got the uh, ceiling tape around there like that. So that's that's important, and let's get this out. So we've got green solder mask, all that black rubbish. Oh, there are silicone leads too. Very nice. So there's our Bluetooth uh, module with a Bluetooth antenna just flapping around in the breeze there. But uh, yeah, you can actually disable it. Does it look like that looks? Was that a MOSFET to disable the power? sort of the uh, oh no that'd be a regulator sorry local regulator powering that separating it because you don't want that bluetooth rubbish seriously i mean you know i if you want bluetooth just go and buy a cheap ass pair of bluetooth speakers but i don't you know everyone's got different requirements okay everyone wants to see the main capacitor brand of course bc um yeah bc capacitors they're actually uh vichy they're actually a uh, reputable uh brand it, you just don't see them that often really can't remember the last time i've seen a bc cap anyway they are reputable so no worries there whatsoever got a couple of other ones just flapping around in the breeze here a couple of uh, vertical power resistors and you run out of space on the board or something it's a bit how you're doing look at all the right angles on the traces here no it almost looks like it's <laughs> <laughs> almost looks like it's auto routed or something but it's actually rather interesting look we've got sort of like goes out there and then right angle like that um i haven't seen that too many times that's an interesting layout let's put it that way don't know why we have a whole bunch of unpopulated oh usb 5 volts okay so it looks like it had optional usb power by the looks of it that's interesting yeah, and looks like we have a genuine bodge here. Look at this. Got some... That's held down with hot snot. Wire goes from this 
via over here, around here, is that connected to something in there? Is there a, yeah, is there a resistor in there? Because otherwise I don't know why you'd stake it like that. Anyway, there, it goes over to here. So I'm not sure what that mod is, but these are uh, pre, I think these are probably uh, pre-production units. So, you know, I'll give them a pass on that. Anyway, these are like, you know, hand built, do it yourself. So like a mod is just, uh, it's almost mandatory, isn't it? I should actually read the solder mask, shouldn't I? <laughs> LM317, there you go. So that is the regulator for the uh, low end. But I'm not sure if they actually disable the power to that Bluetooth module because, look over here, I just, I love this solution here. This is very nice. Let me get that out of the way. And uh, it's just a, a connecting board that joins all the connections together, including the multi-way rotary switch. So this is a very nice solution rather than you know just having the wires just running off like directly over a, a nice um integrated board solution with the right angle traces so all the electrons are going to fly off the corner and uh, they're just going over via a night nice neat ribbon cable i really like that and they've done the same thing down here even though it is on an angle like that i still like the solution oh cheetah pants though with a couple of extended tin copper wires going up to the main board up the top. Oh, took all the elegance out of it. So I'd love to get the rest of the board out. Um, but unfortunately, things like these switches are like, um, you know, they're all glued in and they're all soldered uh, right angle like that. And uh, the power amp, of course, is under here. You can see the two screws there actually doing that down. So that uh, dual in line sort of like, you know, you know, dual row, single in line uh, package like that bolted down. Um, it's a class A, B, none of this modern class D rubbish. Don't want any of that. Um, so I <laughs> can't get you the part number on that, but I'll endeavor to find out. Um, this it will be open source hardware. It's not at the moment, as in though Simon will release the uh, schematic uh, eventually. He's just tidying it up and things like that, because he's seen my video on uh, critiquing schematics, and he, <laughs> he wants to tidy it up before release. So I'll include the uh, data sheet. I'll find the info on that part for you. So as for the cases here, uh, nine millimeter uh, birch plywood, as I said, and and here's the thing I don't, you know, I don't like about the non-symmetry. One's got all this amplification um, stuff and everything else, and the other doesn't. So that's, you can't help but, you know, think, and it will, it's it's going to change the acoustic properties, even with this foam here, um, that's the idea of this foam, so that um, it's, you know, it should be fairly similar, but yeah, I do, ultimately there, there are probably going to be minor um, acoustical differences between the two, like this, so yeah, and this is the, they've got two walls in here, and you can see they're yeah, so there's a top one and a bottom one down here. And as I said, you've got to assemble all these. So I can't take it apart for you to uh, show you. But maybe uh, maybe there's some photos I can include or something like that. Um, or somebody's maybe done a kit assembly video, perhaps. The transmission line port is this. See that gap in between there like that? The, you know, <laughs> the acoustic energy comes out of here and gets trapped in this. So it's like a waveguide. So a, i.e. A, an acoustic transmission line um, that comes out and I think it just goes right angle like that and goes out like that. You probably saw something similar in my focal uh, speaker teardown, although that's more of your traditional like tuned port. And I won't pretend to understand the real differences between a transmission line port and a tuned port. Um, I... <laughs> Like, to me, I think they're, you know, it's, it's probably a bit of just a terminology difference, perhaps. But I, you know, I, Simon reckons that there's a difference um, in these things. And he's quite proud of getting a transmission line design inside such a small enclosure like this. And the whole idea with the transmission line, of course, is that you get no reflections back. Um, so that, you know, the the length of this and the width and the diameter and everything, and it's tuned so that at the specific resonant uh, frequency that you want, um, all the acoustic energy goes out and nothing gets reflected back in to colour the sound and all that sort of jazz. There you go. Sorry, I've got to overexpose the crap out of this to see it. There's our, there's our tweeter. That is fully enclosed down there. It's got silicon 
sealing around the base of it of course everything's got to be sealed and uh, looks like the wiring sealed on top got some more silicon or hot snot in there sealing that down sorry can't show you the woofer because I'd literally have to destroy these things in order to show you woo that's overexposed don't want to expose yourself take the other one off and it's got the same exactly the same foam arrangement in there but as I said it's going to be stuffed full of circuit boards and stuff like that it's got to change the acoustic properties slightly this is why I think you know if you're in the serious monitoring uh, speaker business then you know they, they really have to be absolutely identical res, um, designs in all all respects of like the internal uh, you know volume and and uh, like the interference from the foam and the other components and the wiring and all that sort of stuff Anyway, these of course employ an active uh, crossover, so they cross over and feed into the separate uh, channels of the power amplifier here. So this is a dual stereo uh, power amplifier package because it's got to uh, go over the uh, dual wiring, one for the high frequency, one for the low frequency, over to the uh, second speaker, which of course comes over here like this. So this goes to the internal speaker, as you can see, low frequency and high frequency for the different for the tweeter and the woofer respectively and that goes over to the second speaker and we can actually see the bodges down in there these points here are actually soldered to smd capacitors or resistors going down to a point in there and yes that is uh silicon that's not hot snot so <laughs> there's a component here component here component here so they're using this as like a trace like snaking its way over like that there's got, i think there's another one in there there's another one in there there's another bodge over here there's a couple of caps <laughs> down in there <laughs> in the time-honored tradition of uh you know do-it-yourself uh kit design yep there's mods everywhere that's <laughs> more <laughs> hilarious and yes these are all uh tl074 genuine ti jobbies none of that uh you know shenzhen market rubbish and yeah they're adequate for the job in something like this you know it would have been nice to see some uh, 5534s which are like five times lower noise than these these are you know typically like 18 nanovolts per root hertz whereas you get about three nanovolts per root hertz for the uh, audio the more audio class op amps one of the applications of the tl074 is audio preamps so don't get me wrong it's a uh, it's no problem. And there's the Bluetooth chip for those playing along at home. Yes, it's upside down, so all the electrons are going to fall out. Now, um, it does use the APTX uh, standard, so which is like a psychoacoustic... <laughs> <laughs> um, like compression algorithm thing over uh, standard Bluetooth and it's I'm not sure if it's like the HD version or the low latency version or whatever they're you know incorporating there but it is a regular um, better than your regular Bluetooth it's designed for you know proper streaming audio and uh, stuff like that but there are various uh, flavors of aptx so it's good that it includes that but you know it's still Bluetooth, I don't know, there's just something about Bluetooth that just, like, I don't know. But if you're in the market for some Bluetooth speakers, I mean, these ones would be pretty nice. And that's inside the woofer section of it, just got some foam surrounding that. Nothing special, but, you know, it's uh, trapped fairly well in there, I'm not sure. And then, the, uh, you know, it's got to uh, escape over here. And, uh, I, well, you know, it goes through the foam, low frequency stuff. This foam's not, you know, huge, <laughs> not going to stop much at uh, the low frequencies. So, yeah. Anyway, it's got to get over there. It goes there. And then it's got to, you know, effectively split down the uh, wave guide right down the acoustic waveguide the transmission line but also some of it sneaks over the back as well into the electronics um section so yeah and here's the woofer for those playing along at home and it is actually a, a like a pretty decent one it's a dayton audio uh nd91 4 and in four ohms impedance made in china but it is actually um quite a decently specced uh driver it's like designed for like you know uh, like sound array, uh, sound bars where they have like an array of these speakers and stuff like that you'll notice the nice big roll on there gives it a really high excursion so that is that is quite nice and i don't know why they've got looks like a grill in the back of that so i'm not sure what the 
deal is there. Um, it's magnetically uh, shielded, so no problems. It's actually a full range driver, so it does the full frequency range. So in theory, you didn't need the crossover and the uh, tweeter here, but of course, uh, Simon's decided to uh, you know make this a two-way speaker design. So it really is uh, quite neat, and it um, it sounds pretty good too. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see what this like as a full range speaker would actually uh, do in its own right because a lot of uh, you know people who care about their audio will actually uh, play back their mixed uh, material on a single full range driver like this so it, it sort of like you know simulates uh, sort of like a, like the crappier full range non two way uh, speakers that you know people might actually listen to your music or your uh, you know your video or, or whatever it is you're mixing uh, through so you know but that is a decent driver, no problems. And that cone down in there is supposed to be a black anodized aluminium. Um, it, it doesn't feel like it, but okay. I guess it is, <laughs> that's what the data sheet says. So I'll roll with that. Ah, roll, <laughs> get it, yeah, I'm here all week. And of course it comes with a one hung low adapter with the, I don't actually know if it's a limo, but I'll just call it like a three pin limo connector here. Um, yeah, and we got the cable as well to join the two speakers. So let's power this sucker up, see what's what. Shame it doesn't have a balanced input, otherwise I could have just hooked up to my existing amp. But Okay, I've got my Rode NTG1 microphone here set up uh, 50 centimeters pointed directly at the uh, tweeter there. We'll give it a go. Let's play some MC front a lot, shall we? Last time I had a math class, there wasn't any internet invented yet. Last time I had a math class, there wasn't any internet invented yet. Last time I had a math class, there wasn't any internet invented yet. Last time I had a math class, there wasn't any internet invented yet. Last time I had a math class, there wasn't any internet invented yet. After doing a teardown of this, we discovered that it has no primary side mains fuse, and this is insanity. After doing a teardown of this, we discovered that it has no primary side mains fuse, and this is insanity. So I know it's hard to get like comparisons with uh, studio monitors like these and um, hopefully you can hear the difference there. I won't know until I like actually uh, listen to them AB on my, uh, ironically on my focal studio monitors, although yeah, I know <laughs> the focals are definitely better than these things. Like they're no match. Like you can hear, you wouldn't expect it to be for the price, but these are actually surprisingly good. Um, and the low end capability was actually, it was much more capable than uh, I was expecting. And, but I could, you know, you could hear the distortion in it as they were like, as you tried to drive it hard. So you really can't drive these things hard, nor would you uh, expect to at this sort of, uh, you know, size and uh, power level for something like this but yeah I think they actually work quite well so I'm actually very quite impressed by these based on their you know they're, they're just their physical small size and the yeah Simon seems to have done a decent job acoustically of these things so I'm not blown away by them of course but uh, but they're very decent performance so they're well worth checking out if you especially if you want to build it yourself I probably wouldn't buy them made up like there's much more satisfaction to be had in in building these yourself I think so, so in terms of uh, like voicing for video editing work they're not too shabby at all and they they do compare reasonably favorably with say my old Alesis uh, studio monitors but once again not quite up with the uh, performance of those ones and of course no match uh, to the focals you can just hear much more uh, detail in them it's probably hard to come across in a video like this actually uh, doing a test and you've got to listen to them yourself in your own environment and stuff like that but because they're front uh, ported um, you can actually use them as a near field studio monitor near walls and things like that and they should actually sound pretty decent especially for the size so I think Simon's done a pretty good job actually uh, design and engineering these he's been working on these for years and you know you may not be able to get much better in the uh, you know the size uh, sort of, you know, constraint size and power constraints of these things. I think they're quite jazzy, so well worth checking out. Thank you very much, Simon, for sending those in. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.